Welcome back to Debris Day. Today on Debris Day, we're talking about this, a Tesla Powerwall. Let's go, guys. Okay, guys, this is the who, where, what, why, and how video of the uh, Tesla Powerwall and the PV system we've got on our roof. Um, I thought I'd do the who, where, what, why, and how because a lot of questions that I had when I started along this journey, you guys might have as well. So who, who did we pick? Well, when we initially went on this journey, we knew we wanted solar panels on the roof or PV system on the roof, and we wanted some sort of battery on the back of the property, but we didn't know who to go to. So we used one of these aggregator sites where you put in your details about your energy consumption and what we think we wanted. And we had a minimum of three quotes come back. Those quotes ranged dramatically in value. 5,000 pounds difference from the top and the bottom quote, huge difference. Now, I invited a couple of the people with the quotes around to do the survey, and that didn't really change the price as much. In the end though, I decided to go with Green Home Energy Solutions, a company that I personally felt comfortable with. They're a Norfolk based company, so keeping it local to Norfolk. And I just felt comfortable speaking to Debbie, who was one of the directors who runs the company back at the office. We talked through our requirements and we felt very comfortable with proceeding ahead with those. So let's talk about where. Well, where did we get the system installed? Well, uh, on our roof, we're lucky to be almost southern facing. So we had the solar panels installed on the southern face of the roof, which I'll show you on the video. And then we decided to have the battery and the gateway installed on the back of the property, which is near the consumer unit. And then little runs on cables, so we didn't have cables all running around the house. It's out of the way, out of the sunshine, especially for the power wall, it's out of the sunshine because lithium batteries don't do well with lots of heat. And allowed us to have the inverter, the gateway, the power wall, every, all of the gubbins on the back of the property, which I'll show you on the video as well. So we've stored it on the back of the house. We have the PV on the top of the house and then a small piece of cabling going through the attic, uh, through the loft to connect them all together. What was I after? I was after a solar PV system on the roof of our property, which then would allow us to store the energy in a big battery of some form uh, in order to reduce our carbon footprint and also to allow us to run the house efficiently. Let's talk about why. Why did we pick a Tesla Powerwall with a gateway and why did we pick Solar Edge? Well, let's start with the Tesla Powerwall. The Tesla Powerwall, in my opinion, is the market leader. It can hold 3.5 kilowatts worth of energy in the lithium-ion batteries, which is basically a big battery. Um, but what it does is it allows you to have a seven kilowatt peak output and five kilowatt continuous with unlimited cycles over 10 years. After 10 years, Tesla guarantees that you'll still be able to use 80% of a 13.5 kilowatt. So that means that battery can still be useful over 10 years time. Now, seven kilowatt peak means that when you're turning on your kettle, which is typically about three kilowatts, or you're turning on your washing machine at the same time, that the inverter and the system can actually handle that amount of power being discharged from the battery to start your devices up. The Tesla Power will also allow you to have five kilowatt continuous. So when you are running those devices, it's not gonna suddenly shut down and stop your washing machine or stop your kettle because it's drawing too much power. So in my opinion, Tesla Powerwall with the gateway is the market leader. So why did we pick Solar Edge? Well, let's talk about string versus microinverters. So a string system, in essence, you could have one or two strings worth of solar panels together in line, in serial for a better word. But if one of those panels get covered up by a piece of cloud or shade from a tree or something different, then that entire string will stop generating power. The difference between that and a microinverter is that a microinverter has an inverter on every single one of the panels. So if one of those panels gets covered up by a piece of shade, that panel will stop generating energy, but the rest of the panels will continue generating power. Now you do pay a little bit more for the microinverters, but hopefully you can see the benefit of having the microinverters of the string is that they'll continue making power if we've, one of those cells is shaded, whereas the string, that takes the, the entire string. A bit more cost, but overall, we believe that that was the right solution for us. So let's talk about the how. How was it installed? Now, I think it's worthwhile giving you some timelines. So that's who we're, who we're dealing with. So Green Home Energy Solutions. Let's give you a timeline. On the 17th of February, Kerry popped over and did the site survey. Uh, very efficient. We talked through about my requirements. Uh, on the 18th of February, the next day, we got the initial contract that came through from Debbie in the office. 
On the 19th, we had a few backwards and forwards conversations and we discussed the differences between string inverters versus microinverters. Now, a string inverter, um, in essence, you could have a couple of strings worth of solar PV systems. But uh, Kerry explained to me that if the sunlight gets covered up by shade, so for example, a tree or a cloud, then that string of PV um, photovoltaic um, cells would stop working. So it's not as efficient as microinverters. There is a difference in price of a few thousand pounds, but microinverters were a bit better. Um, anyway, backwards and forwards on the initial quote, um, I was trying to do a like-for-like -like comparison of about a 5.76 kilowatt system between the three um, uh, companies that I'd spoken to. Uh, it would be made up of 18 panels of various sizes, and we were looking at Canadian Solar and Solar Edge. Uh, on the 21st of February, so a few days later, we had some revised quotes after those discussions with Debbie in the office. And on the 21st of February, we decided to sign. What did we sign for? Well, we signed for 340 watt panels, 18 of those solar edge microinverters. So in essence, microinverters, if you've got two lots of nine panels, if one of those panels has a bit of shade from a tree or a cloud, the rest of the microinverter panels would still work. So that way you get the continuous power coming out of your PV system. Um, we then upped the panel size to 340 watts, and that gave us a total of 6.12 kilowatts on the roof. Um, so we signed the contract. So we're going to get the solar PV on the roof, and we also signed the contract for a Tesla Powerwall. Um, after we signed the contract on the 22nd of February, so a day later, uh, Debbie in the office sent us the AC G99 form. Now what this form is, it goes off to your power company to confirm how much power you're going to generate and how much power you potentially can send back to the grid. Now the, the uh, company would only allow you to have a certain amount of power you can send back. There's a few other considerations there, but that's the main reason. Then on the 24th of February, we sent the form back and we sent from Debbie in the office off to UK Power. On the 25th of March, UK Power sent back the form all signed, so we were good to go. The next day, we received that form all signed from Debbie in the office and we sent our deposit off to commence the actual purchasing of the products ready to do the install. We got a phone call from Debbie on the 6th of April saying we're ready to go ahead and do the install and we arranged for install to commence two days later on the 8th of April. Now, on the 8th of April, um, Kerry turned up with his son and Max the electrician and they erected some scaffolding on the front of our property and commenced to move up onto the roof and install the PV system across the roof. On the 9th of April, the installation was complete um, and on the 10th of April, we had our first full day of charge. So from the start to the end, from the 18th of February when we signed a contract to the 10th of April, it was about two months, so about eight weeks from start to finish of this process. So 10th of April was our first full day. Um, so far though, we're generating between 25 and 35 kilowatt hours a day out of this system. What it actually means is during the day, in the morning, um, we use our, our battery before the sun comes up. So we'll start our breakfast, put the kettle on, those kind of things. And the battery's got more than enough power to do that. And then from about six, seven o'clock in the morning, the battery starts charging over the, off, off of the PV system. By this sort of time, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, the battery's fully powered. So at that point, the PV system is just generating electricity. And unless you consume it inside of your house, it'll push it back to the grid and you'll get some payback for that. We like to look further afield in that in a year or two, we'd like to get an EV, an electric vehicle, so a Tesla car or something similar. And this system will allow us to charge the batteries in that car for free. Um, the only cost we'll have is the running cost of the car for things like tires and, and very low maintenance on a car. And obviously road tax. But road tax is zero at the moment for EV cars anyway. So we're looking further afield. Overall, this system will save us money in the longer term and allow us to have a reduced carbon footprint and allow us to use free energy, which we can. As you can see, it's a glorious day today. We're thoroughly enjoying the sunshine. We're enjoying making free energy. So look guys, that's the, uh, the end of the video. If you've got any questions or queries, please ping us below. I'll happily try and answer all of those questions, but I'll give you an idea, idea how long it took to get the installation set up, why we chose that particular installation over others, um, how we feel about having it installed for the first few days, and how it's changing our lifestyle. It's, it's great, we're using free energy all the time. Anyway guys, 
Hopefully you found that useful. If you've got any questions or queries, please give me a ping. Thank you so much for watching Debris Day and I'll see you next time. Cheers and bye.